Welcome to a special edition of Free Minds TV, where we're in Guilford, New Hampshire, at Gunstock Mountain for Porkfest 2008. Porkfest is the annual gathering of Free State Project members, liberty activists, and people who generally just want more freedom and less government. We're going to go on inside and listen to some speakers and talk to some people about why New Hampshire was the place for freedom activists to move to to fight for more freedom and less government. When I look around the country, baby, things ain't looking very good. When I look around the country, baby, things ain't looking very good. I see the President and Congress, they ain't acting like they should. I would look into the judges, baby, but my hopes were way too high. I went looking to the judges, baby, but my hopes were way too high. You're stealing power from the juries, don't it make you wonder why? I really screw up. What are you gonna do, babe? That's what you keep on asking me. What are you gonna do, man? That's what you keep on asking me. I know you never wanted much, babe. You just wanted to be free. Have you heard about the Free State Project? That's what some folks are going to do. Have you heard about the Free State Project? That's what some folks are going to do. They're recruiting 20,000, and they want folks like me and you. So let's start packing, baby. We wanted this for way too long. Baby, we wanted this for way too long. Let's move up to New Hampshire and let's go build our happy home. Let's gather up the family and let's go build our happy home. Let's move up to New Hampshire and let's go build our happy home. We're here at the Vendor Tent where different liberty-oriented organizations and businesses network with each other and other Free State Project members, as well as people who may not yet have decided for sure that they're going to move to New Hampshire, maybe help encourage them to make the move. Uh, so let's talk to a few of them and see what they're up to. Okay, so we're here with Matt Simon from New Hampshire Common Sense. And uh, Matt, for viewers who haven't heard before, um, what is New Hampshire Common Sense and what are they doing? New Hampshire Common Sense is the New Hampshire Coalition for Common Sense Marijuana Policy. We're trying to reduce the harms caused by marijuana prohibition in our state. That means reducing penalties uh, for marijuana possession. We had a bill to do that this year that passed the New Hampshire House in a big surprise and got killed in the Senate, but we made a lot of progress, got a lot of great media, and we're set up well for that issue going forward. Also, medical marijuana next year, we think we have a very good chance to make New Hampshire the 13th uh, medical marijuana state and exempt seriously and terminally ill patients who have doctor's recommendations from arrest. And what do you think the prospects are for general decrim next year? Is that coming up again? Or? It, it, it could. Uh, it'll come up next in the next two years for sure. And obviously, we're in much better shape than we were. <laughs> uh, the poll numbers are 71% of New Hampshire voters are for medical marijuana, 53% for decrim. So the way politicians think, they want to do the most popular thing first. If they want to pass medical marijuana first, that's fine with us, and then, then we'll go on to decrim. And we understand it's a process and that it doesn't happen overnight just because you're right. And how is the, uh, how's the response been here at the Pork Pine Freedom Festival? We always get a good re reception here at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. There are many issues represented here today and many people care about different things, but we all pretty much agree that people own their own bodies and as long as they're not hurting other people, they should be able to ingest 
especially a, a substance that's safer than alcohol or tobacco without running into trouble with the law. So, absolutely. And um, if people want to find out more about Common Sense or help out, join, um, where should they go? NHCommonSense.org. So we're here with Don Lincoln with the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. And Don, do you want to tell people who might not be familiar with the show what the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is and what they're trying to do in New Hampshire? Sure. Um, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance is a nonpartisan organization that is trying to maintain and increase freedom in New Hampshire. And we do that predominantly by working uh, within the political system. We review all the bills that come before the State House, and our focus is solely on New Hampshire. So um, the State House is where we really work on uh, seeing what bills are coming before there, which there's about a thousand bills a year that come before the legislature. So we review them with a team of volunteers, and then we put together a liberty rating at the end of the session, which uh, we just happened to unveil last night at our annual liberty dinner, and we give an award to the legislator of the year, who for 2008 was Jason Bedrick from Wyndham. Um, we spend time also uh, training people on things like uh, the New Hampshire Constitution and how to um, be effective in the state house if you want to help uh, testify on bills, how to do that in an effective way so that you can be uh, bringing forward the liberty points to the representatives and hoping to get them to start thinking a little bit more about liberty. Now, is the new Liberty rating going to be available online? Yes, it will be. Um, since we just unveiled it last night, it might take a week or two, but it will definitely be online on our website, nhliberty.org. We're always looking for more um, volunteers and people with ideas of, you know, better things that we can do. Uh, we will be working hard um, in the upcoming campaign season to uh, help candidates um, with volunteers for their campaigns and also with donations for their campaigns. Last night, actually, we had um, we donated $100 each to the 17 A plus rated reps for 2008. And they all are that's the start of what we're doing, and we hope to raise more funds and be able to help more candidates uh, so we can try to get as many people elected to the state house who understand and respect our liberty and freedom. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Thank you. We're here with Kevin uh from the Liberty Dollar. Hi. And Kevin, you're going to be making a, a Hallmark Edition um, Free State Project coin. Right? That's right. Well, we call them um, Liberty Dollar Pieces yep. or Specie. And uh, we start off with a $50 base, our newest one. I'll be hallmarking this piece. History in the making. This is a major event. The Free State Project will have its own special identifier in terms of currency. And there we are. The very first one. There's no law that prohibits you from making your own money. You just can't give it the wrong legal classification and don't demand that people take it. It's voluntary. So we put that right on there. Notice, not intended for use as legal tender, current money, or coin. And in all our publications it says the same thing. Well, after eight years, a funny thing happened. They said, and a spokesperson for the U.S. Mint said, well, if there was just a small amount in circulation, that would be no problem. But Liberty Dollar says there's over $20 million in circulation. That's a problem. So. What's the problem in having competition? Maybe we can have some more pieces that have some value in it, like they used to have up until about uh, the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. And then we went off coinage that had an intrinsic value and went to slugs, actually. The paper, most paper money is not backed by anything. It's created out of nothing. Ron Paul's been saying that for years now. It's up to us to start acting on the rights that we already have. And that takes courage, conviction, and working together. So we're here with Jason Roos from the Wicked Good Show. And Jason, you want to tell us a little bit about what your show is and what you're doing? Revolution, baby. Complete change of government. Corporations and government are out of control. It's time for people of New Hampshire to take the system back. And um, when did you get here at Porkfest? I got here today. This is my first pork fest and uh, first time I've been introduced to the free staters. It's uh, really neat. 
I think they're doing some good stuff up here, a lot of good vendors, a lot of kindred spirits. Website, wickedgoodshow.com or revnh.com, which is a website dedicated to revolution in the state of New Hampshire. We're here with Jim Whitmore from Gunners of New Hampshire. And Jim, can you tell us um, basically what Go and H does in the state of New Hampshire? Well, Gun Owners of New Hampshire is basically the state level of uh, like the NRA. We're the NRA state affiliate, and you know we keep track of what's going on in terms of Second Amendment law in Concord, and let our members know what's going on through a newsletter and through uh, email alerts, minute, uh, postcard alerts, so that uh, they can contact their legislators or show up for hearings and have their voice heard that way. Generally speaking, how is New Hampshire relative to other states in terms of? being Second Amendment friendly. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're near the top. We, we may not be the top, but uh, we're a shell issue state as far as uh, concealed carry. You know, basically, if you can pass the check to buy a gun, you can pass the check to get your concealed carry license. You have to you know, go through your town, uh, usually the police chief, fill out an application, and if there's no reason for them to legally deny you, then they have to issue it. All the states that they mark bad grades, like New Hampshire is a D minus and Vermont is an F, we usually buy for top state for safest state in the nation. The ones that they mark, give good marks to, are always on the lower, worst states in the nation. It, it definitely correlates to the safety of everybody in general having our rights. And yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll see a pattern with Massachusetts has a much higher murder rate than New Hampshire and Vermont. New York has a worse murder rate and stricter gun laws, probably arguably than Massachusetts. So we're here with Dale Burt. Uh, you publish drawings at anarchyinyourhead.com. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the projects you've been working on and what it is you're trying to do? Yeah, um, well, the notion of uh, the, the comic strip is to uh, explore liberty from a philosophical perspective. I'm actually very apolitical. I don't think politics will get us to freedom. Uh, I think politics is part of the machine and it's part of the game they want you to play. And so the whole idea of uh, anarchy in your head is just about freeing your mind. And uh, so I think the idea is we have to reach individuals and get them to understand that, uh, that you're not going to achieve freedom through politics. Now you chose the word anarchy, which some people prefer not to use. Sort of a loaded word. Right. Uh, are there any other labels you would use to describe it? Yeah, I would. You know, voluntarism. You know, the, the notion of you know anarchy. Anarchy is derived from the notion that we don't want hierarchies of people. We want people to be poli politically equivalent. And what the government and the, the way the government is right now is certain people are, are given a special status over other people and they have power over other people and they have special rights. Uh, we should all have the same rights and someone shouldn't be you know, in a position to, to punish me for something that's really none of their business. So the idea is, uh, that's where the word anarchy comes from in my, that's the way I use it. But uh, a voluntarist is a good, a good word to use, a free marketeer. Or, um, uh, right, and I, I believe you're the first person to really be doing, you know, graphic art for it, in the Free State Project in terms of making it an actual cohesive project that you're working on. Yeah, apparently so. I mean, I, I think some a couple of other graphic design people have gotten into the project, but I guess as far as like starting an actual libertarian themed comic strip online, uh, I, yeah, I think I'm the first free stater to do that. All right, well, we'll catch up with you a little bit later. Good. All right, so we're here with Pete from Beer Crash, and do you want to tell the viewers what Beer Crash is? Sure, yeah, Beer Crash is a, uh, it's a 501c3, which is a nonprofit organization uh, where ideas based activism for freedom. So basically, we try to use whatever mediums uh, are going to be the best conduits to get the li liberty message out there. So we have contraband, uh, we, we use videos, and we try to get, you know, obviously, if they go viral, that's awesome. We, uh, we have podcasts blog, things like that. So basically we just try to encourage folks to really internalize the ideas of liberty and uh, get out there and be active. And it's, about, it's about, you know, uh, getting people to think for themselves and, and really come and see that, you know, freedom is the way to go and, instead of working for the state because that's just is coercive. Right, and I noticed you guys took on Che Guevara quite right. in quite a few t-shirt designs. Yeah. Obviously he's kind of a pop culture icon. Yeah. 
but many people who are wearing the t-shirts don't realize yeah. what he was actually about. Right, yeah, you're right. We actually have, yeah, as you probably can see, three t-shirts that feature Che because he is like a popular in, in the culture. So what, what we do is, you know, if I see someone wearing a Che shirt, you know, I, I usually go up to him and say, oh, that's a nice shirt. And they'll, oh, that's thanks, thanks a lot. And then I, I say, do you have the whole set, the whole collection? And they're like, what do you mean? And I say, yeah, Hitler and Mao and Stalin. And, you know, they're kind of like, what you, you know, they may not have even known he was, you know, involved in a lot of bad things. So just trying to get people to think and then plant the seeds and stuff. And does, I know you guys are here at Porkfest this weekend. Um, Beer Crash tends to hit up events around the country. Do you have anything planned for this summer? Yeah, actually this summer we're doing quite a bit of events. There's, uh, there's another organization out of Canada called the Institute for Liberal Studies, and they have a, uh, one of their seminars in the summer called the Liberty Summer Seminar, just east of Toronto, and we're going to be there. Uh, Beer Crash has had a real strong partnership with them for six years now and uh, we're actually sponsoring we have a we just announced a contest so folks that want to go to the seminar but maybe can't afford it they just either have to you know submit three quick answers to questions that we have like uh, why you care about liberty what you've done for liberty as an activist and then why you want to go to the seminar and we're going to provide someone with a round trip ticket and, and the registration cost um, we're also going to be out in vegas at the freedom fest uh, we're giving out uh, we're providing crashers in our network that are going to other seminars through like the Institute for Humane Studies, the Mises Institute, FEE, a bunch of different groups. You know, we'll give them we'll some contraband their way and they're gonna, you know, give a couple minutes spiel about beer crash at the seminars to introduce folks to beer crash. Now the crashers, some of the viewers might not be familiar with them, but I am. Did you wanna say what you know what crashers are and what they do? They go out, they crash different events, you know, folks that may be advocating for uh, status policies, you know, more, more government control of certain areas. They'll go in there, they'll crash these events, and it may be, you know, a direct kind of, you know, obviously nonviolent, but, you know, uh, they may advocate free trade, you know, when someone else is advocating fair trade, uh, or they may use uh, a kind of a Bastiat example. They may kind of get involved with this group and, uh, Take their take their aims to the fullest conclusion and let them see the fallacies of their argument. And uh, so, so those are the folks that are that are we call crashers. And it's it's one thing. That, I mean, that's the heart and soul of bureaucrats. And one thing that uh, I, I'm gonna we're gonna really work on uh, continuing to cultivate uh, over the next in the near future, in the long term. We're gonna try to decentralize bureaucrats and allow for the facilitation of communication between crashers so they can share that task of knowledge and that spot spontaneity. You know, so I want to come into the office and, and like learn that some crashers in Paris, you know, did an event, or in San Francisco and Miami, like coordinated something together. So that's where I see it. And for those watching overseas, Beer Crash does it is international, yeah, right? Yeah, it's an international network of activists. So yeah, check out our site and you know hit us up with suggestions. And, and your website is it's just BeerCrash.com. All right. Uh, All right. Thanks. All right, we're here in front of where Free Talk Live is recording. Uh, they generally broadcast out of Keene, which is our hometown, uh, but they're here for tonight and tomorrow uh, here at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and they're giving people an opportunity to get on the air. And generally, I co-host on Free Talk Live Tuesday nights, and occasionally Toby, who co-hosts with me on Free Minds TV, does so as well. And so those who would like to listen to us on Free Talk Live can go to freetalklive.com. But let's go over to the Free Talk Live studio, basically, and uh, see what I can do getting on air. To talk about the, uh, the awesomeness of these people. They are so cool, and it's just, you, you can meet somebody for the first time ever, as you said, you just don't say. And there's, there's, even though you don't know this person from Adam, there's some sort of bond there. There's something special, because you do already agree on so much, and you don't even really know each other. It's very strange. Yeah, there's certainly a camaraderie, and, and you do know before you really start talking to somebody that you're in the same camp on a lot of things. You know, I mean, even though, even among liberty activists, sometimes there are some areas where people there's will disagree, beliefs, and sure. especially in how to approach solving problems and getting government out of people's lives. But generally speaking, it, it's really great to be around people who at least agree with where you're coming from and nobody thinks you're crazy. 
You have never been around this many cool, liberty-oriented people, and it's fun to it's fun to envision for somebody that doesn't really know what it's like to be here and constantly have access to these great people uh, to, to just sort of envision what that could mean for the future of pro-liberty activism. I mean, there's so much that has already happened with the Free State Project, with 20,000 liberty-loving activists moving to New Hampshire, even with only a few hundred of early movers. It's amazing to see what has happened so far, and all that's going to happen in the future is just more and more, and it's going to get better and better. And it's, it's I, I heard, uh, I think it was Rich Goldman talking earlier on the stage about what is Porkfest going to be like when there are a thousand people attending, when, when 20,000 liber liberty-loving people are actually in New Hampshire, and then you've got 5,000 people, and, you know, however many of the 20,000 will show up for Porkfest, you've got thousands of people around. What's that going to be like? I mean, that's almost most crazy to think about. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more about that whole concept, which of course we'll continue to talk about. And go to porkfest.com to see what we're doing here. P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. More coming up. Your calls as well. Thank you, Nick. I know you've got a lot of business to attend to, so enjoy yourself here, okay? I will. 800-259-9231. It's Free Talk Live. So while the Free State Project is a goal to get 20,000 people to sign up and then make the move to New Hampshire within five years, there's a lot of people who think that's just too much time to wait. They want to come to New Hampshire now and fight for freedom and fight for more liberty now without waiting. So what's going on behind me right now is a panel discussion on early movers. So we're going to go and listen in on some of the people, hear their stories about why they decided to make the move now to New Hampshire instead of waiting. Michael Peltier, another early mover, and he's going to be sharing his story and the experience of moving to New Hampshire and what he's been doing since then. I was born and raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and then uh, due to a tremendous career opportunity, I moved out to California and doubled my salary. We lived in California for five years on our little 5,000 square foot uh, lot in our little ranch house on a slab and you know we each felt a few a couple of earthquakes nothing too serious uh, but um, we never felt really rooted there and in November 2003 we uh, piled all our two cats and a dog and uh, all our belongings into uh, an RV all the stuff that didn't make it into the uh, to the moving van which was a lot more than we <laughs> anticipated and uh, drove across the country towing our car and uh, arrived at an apartment in Bedford, New Hampshire, uh, just before Thanksgiving in 2003. So I guess uh, if, if Jackie's mover number zero, I guess we're, we were movers number one <laughs> and two. So, but what we what we came to find out is that New Hampshire couldn't have been a better choice for the Free State Project because uh, once we moved to Merrimack, we discovered that our neighbors two doors down had moved from New York to New Hampshire. 25 years ago for exactly the same reasons that the Free State Project sets forth. That, and, and what this made me realize is that the Free State Project has been going on in New Hampshire for decades and decades. I uh, was involved in political activity at a grassroots level for about 15 years before I heard about the Free State Project. Most of my interest was in tax reform and the economy. A lot of people worked really hard putting a network in place to help everybody come in and get started on whatever you want to do. If you're not interested in politics, there's volunteer work. There's uh, nonprofit work. There's the local stuff. The whole state of New Hampshire is run by volunteers. And that's perfect for a, for a volunteer society based upon the non-aggression principle. I mean, when we first decided to move here, it was like we were coming no matter what, whether we had jobs or whatever, like in late in 2000. Five, we told our employer, we were both working for the same company, that, uh, hey, just to give you an advance warning, we're going to move to New Hampshire as soon as we can. And after you move in, you make so many friends on that first day, and you find people that live nearby you. You're, you're, they'll tell you where to go. They'll tell you, you know, come to Murphy's on Tuesday, where the speed traps are, how to get around the toll booths. Yeah, I can attest to that when I was living here uh, in the summer of 2005, and it seemed like every weekend we were moving somebody in and having a moving party. There'd be pizza, drinks, barbecues, everyone has a good time, and there'd be 30, 40, 50 people that would sometimes help people unload. When I first came, I heard rumors that they don't like outsiders and whatever, but they were really nice as far as uh, extremely welcoming people. I, uh, my landlady, my first landlady, 
was super cool. She, she's just, you know, you take the downstairs, I take the upstairs, do whatever you want, you know, and I'll buy you wine if you stack the wood. <laughs> like, okay, and I said, well, can I have a party? And she's like, yeah, you know, and John Babiars and a few of the early people were there. And, but before the party, I asked her, well, some of the people might have, be smoking um, pot. <laughs> and she's like, do you have any now? <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, my landlady's cool. And I met a really nice uh, guy here and find out he was uh, formerly Massachusetts, didn't know anything about the Free State Project, didn't know what a libertarian was and never used the word freedom, but he just said, well, I moved from Mass to New Hampshire years ago because they're just so freaking stuffy and uptight over there and I just like the freedom, and, you know, the, the style of New Hampshire. So the people that are here are here for a reason. They're a certain way and they're really cool, really accepting. And after I spent the years as an exotic dancer, I wondered, well, how am I going to be accepted back into corporate America? What do I put on my resume? What do I say in the interview? But I went into the interview and the woman that interviewed me for the um, position selling trucks at the truck center of Toyota of Nashua, she just was like, so she's like, well, you, when, when do you want to start? You know, all right, it's fine. No big deal. So the people are very open-minded and accepting and tolerant. And I have yet to meet a single New Hampshireite that thinks of me as an outsider. So we're here with Michael Hampton, who does HomelandStupidity.us, and do you want to tell us a little bit about your website? Well, Homeland Stupidity is a website where I, I publish news and opinion about what the government's doing wrong, just things that are doing that are stupid. Um, real good example is uh, for Keen, last year, uh, State Rep. Delmar Burridge, when he sent, uh, he sent that letter to Toby about uh, how he should snitch out his friends for marijuana. Um, I published that. It eventually made national news because of that. Um, and then, but mostly I focus on national things like the Department of Homeland Security, which isn't really giving us security, just a bunch of bureaucracy and police state. So, um, and then overspending by the government, uh, waste of money, abuse, corruption, things along those lines. All right, and in addition to doing the website, you also introduced a phone service called Porcupine 411. Do you want to explain you know, what, what that service is and how, how it works for Free State Project members? Um, well, what Porcupine 411 is, it's, it's an information service where uh, you have a number you can call and record a brief message on the number. And what happens with this message, it, it gets recorded and it gets turned around and email blasted out to everyone who subscribes to the service. Uh, it goes out by email, it goes out to cell phones by MMS. It also is now available by a podcast. And uh, you can find out about that at porcupine411.com. All right, and now there's been an introduction of a new number, if I understand it right, or one pending. That's going to be more akin to a, a Porcupine 911. Yeah, the, there is a por there is a Porcupine 911. Uh, it's in development right now. Uh, it, it's functional. There is a number you can call and reach people, uh, but all the all the features that I want on the back end aren't yet fully developed. So, um, basically, if you call that number, the phone in my pocket will go off. But eventually, you're looking to do actually having a live operator 24 hours a yeah, day if you can get that well, together. There are, four, there are about four other people whose phones will also go off, but uh, eventually I do want to have 24-7 uh, coverage by live people. Um, I want to have back-end services where uh, when someone calls, it, know, it recognizes their phone number, knows who they are, uh, knows what types of uh, services or help they might need. Uh, like, they might call us first if their house is on fire. Um, not now, but in the in the far future. Right. So, uh, but and we'll just match fire for them. Uh, things along those lines. So it's obviously it's a work in progress, but it sounds pretty ambitious. I don't. It's basically almost like a private 911 service. It it's is an alternative. It's like a private 911 service. It doesn't. The, the, what, the main difference is that it doesn't necessarily have to be used for emergencies. Um, the only really requirement is that when you call it it's you need something that requires a human to get involved and talk to you and, and maybe do something that is a little more complicated than just blasting a message out to everyone. Okay. All right. Well
So we're here with Gardner Goldsmith, um, personality on your radio show Against the Grain. Yes, sir. And uh, an author now, Live Free or Die. Yes, sir. So uh, yeah. let's start with the radio show. Uh, it's primarily political talk. I try to infuse, it's political economics, essentially. I mean, you know, as you know, as anybody who really understands freedom knows, you can never separate economic freedom from any of the other political freedoms. They're all one and the same. And so um, we pick contemporary issues and we talk about those things. And I try to derive some lesson about political economics and removing government, the government apparatus, as often as possible. And then, you know, try to make it a little bit hipper by, you know, playing music that people don't get to hear very often, Danko Jones. Um, and um, also, occasionally it just gets to be a massive bummer talking about politics every day. So, you know, we'll throw in other stuff to talk about movies or, you know, just do skits, you know. I mean, the only way I could survive doing a political talk program is if I got to mock the politicians, you know. So that's always a benefit. Yeah. So, uh, moving on to your book. Now, uh, it's Live For Your Die. It, it was just released this year, if I'm correct about that. Yeah. And yeah. I had a chance to read it. I personally liked it. Thanks. Um, now, do you want to let the viewers know what the, what the book is kind of about? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Live for a Die is a collection of essays on politics and economics mixed in with some fiction that I put in just because I, I thought that, again, a lot of people, even when you find people with whom you agree on politics, it's not going to be a positive conversation most of the time. It's like mutual complaints society. It's like, oh yeah, those idiots, they're doing this, or I hate it when they do that. So generally, what I have in there are essays on free speech, free market economics from the Austrian perspective, on monar anarcho-capitalists, so, you know, remove government impediments. And it moves from sort of a, a paleo-conservative to an anarchist worldview at the end of it. And, you know, I try to explain to people that I was originally a Lockean, and then I started to analyze Locke a little more, and I realized that even Locke's assumption that the state has to exist in order to pro provide the police force to protect our our liberties our negative rights natural rights uh, that concept doesn't hold because it's internally contradictory if if as he says no man can have a portion of his property taken without his consent but the police force that's created to protect him from having his property taken without his consent if that police force is created without his consent You've got a tautology. It doesn't work. Right. So the, the so I realized, and I had already been you know uh, an anarcho capitalist before that anyway. But I realized that philosophically, Lockean natural rights theory is sort of unsupportable because it's internally. Check it out. Oh, you guys are great, man. This is awesome. Thanks. Hey, well, like what you're doing. Too. Thank you, brother. Awesome. During the 2006 election, the courts committed another aggression upon the people. They told the Secretary of State not to execute the law as the legislature had prescribed and then told him to execute another law that they prescribed. And I opined upon the uh, House Republican listserv and at the end of it one of my compatriots said, you know, you ought to write a commentary on the New Hampshire Constitution. So I did. And that's what's brought me here. We're here with Representative Dan Itza, uh, state representative in the state of New Hampshire, and you were speaking earlier for the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance here yes. at Portfest. Um, now, what do you think the impact of the Free State Project has been so far on politics in New Hampshire? Well, this last year I think has had its greatest impact so far with the publishing of the gold standard and reminding reps of the handful of bills each session day that really impact the people's liberty. Now, what do you think the impact is going to be on the election cycle this year? Do you, do you think a lot of pro-liberty candidates are going to fare well this year? I think that we have an excellent opportunity to fare well. We've had two years of uh, the status doing great damage up in Concord, uh, or down in Concord, depending on where you are in the state. And uh, we now have probably a good 25 new uh, liberty-oriented candidates. And that's, that's a huge addition. I consider that we had um, 160 Republicans and probably out of that 125 real liberty-oriented individuals. You add that another 25 if they can get elected, 
and all of a sudden you're up to 150, maybe 160 liberty-oriented individuals. That is a, a huge addition. You're talking an increase of 25 percent. Right. So, but hopefully, do you think they have good chances of actually getting seats in the legislature in the general election? Or? I think so. If they can articulate their message to the people, if they can inspire the people of their districts to fight for freedom and vote for freedom, yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. We're here with Jason Osborne, owner of SACL CAI. And Jason, you've been putting on basically a fun tent. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what the fun tent is and what you've been? Uh, the fun tent involves uh, the one critical component of fun, and that is booze. <laughs> and uh, that's why we're here. I looked at the schedule before I decided to come, and there was nothing on there that said free booze. So I uh, brought it. Right. So you've been offering basically anyone who wants to stop by uh, free beer That's and, right. and well, other yeah, libations. Beer. And uh, were you offering free barbecue earlier in the week? No, that got shut down by the authorities. Oh, uh, I there see. There was going to be a big old barbecue trailer, but uh, we got uh, taken down. Some kind of a health regulation about? Yeah, they have to get the liability insurance and all this crazy crap. And um, are you sponsoring other events here? At, I, I saw a SACL CAI banner on the uh, stage. Yeah, I, you know, I gave them a bunch of money, and they said it was going to pay for the bands, but then I found out the bands were free, so I'm not real sure where that money went to. But you, <laughs> you, were, you were basically helping Porkfest put on a, a good time That's for everyone coming. That's my understanding. It may have, in fact, gone in Mark Warden's pocket, so I, I don't really know. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, so you're a Free State Project member yourself, correct? Correct. And uh, you're, you're planning to move to New Hampshire sometime in sometime the Sometime soon, uh, whenever I can uh, create the necessary business interest here in the state to justify spending more time out here. But for now, uh, Pork Fest and Liberty Forum will have to do. All right. Well, we look forward to you being here. Awesome, dude. All right. Thanks. Cheers. So we're here with Sam Dodson, and uh, Sam, you're putting together a documentary on Pork Fest and sort of the FSP as a whole. Yeah, well, I'm coming up here to do a number of things with all the activists that are here. Um, I've kind of latched on to some of the things that they already have going. On uh, Tuesday night, we went out with Shane Maxfield. He's a lieutenant in the uh, Keene Police Department. We rode around for two hours with him, searching parking lots and talking about the free market. And, uh, you know, frankly, in Texas, where I'm at, I'm not going to find anything at all remotely close to that where I can go in, sit down with somebody in the police department, and really um, talk to them about these ideas. That's only happening here in Keene, so I've kind of jumped into the fray and started to capture some of that on uh, video and put it together, and eventually I'm going to stitch it into a story that tells a little bit about what's going on with the Free State Project. And now you've got some video up online already, is that correct? Yes, on uh, YouTube. It's youtube.com slash obscured truth. People have to figure out how to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> but, and are you, what you explained to me is you're looking for feedback so you can help tell yes. what, what kind of footage people want to see in a documentary? So kind of the point of that is to, um, I, I mean, I do a lot of different things from flying without ID with the TSA and capturing that. I'm fighting tickets in court, questioning the authority of the court and, you know, how, did, how do you have the right to enforce, to violate my rights, which is what governments were designed to do in order to supposedly protect my rights? You know, if there's no victim, then you really don't have a crime. So I'm questioning that of the judge and really, um, they don't like it very much. <laughs> but it's, you know, other people seem to be really interested in that. So I've motioned the court to bring the cameras in and in the name of, uh, you know, them doing their public duty and making sure the courts are accessible, We'll see if they actually live up to that or if that's just for show and, you know, to make it look good. So if I can get the cameras in there, then that stuff will go on the YouTube channel. And as uh, the interest, you know, as people watch the different videos and give me comments back, I uh, change my approach and try out different things. And when I get a formula that works, I'm going to take and um, put that into some short films and start submitting that to the film festivals, that sort of thing. Well, the Free State Project has a ton of stuff going on in and of itself, such as speakers talking about moving, uh, they have all sorts of vendor tables, hiking trips. There's also some people that want to branch off and do stuff on their own. 
Here's the Alternative Expo tent where they're doing all sorts of stuff, discussion topics, all the way from uh, gun rights to cable access and all sorts of different stuff. Let's catch up with one of them and see what the Alternative Expo is all about. What is it? I mean, there's all this different stuff going on here at the Free State Project at the Pork, Pork Fest 2008, and then there's the Alternative Expo. What is it? Is it a part of Pork Fest, a subset? For people who have no idea what it is, could you explain it a little? Yeah, um, what happens is, um, you know, for your freedom activism, you can do, um, you can do voting, you can do any number of things. Yep. And there's already uh, a, a large group of people that are involved in some alternatives movement or other alternative medicine, alternative education, you know, would be homeschooling or private schooling. Um, there's alternative monies, you know, the Liberty Dollar, things like that. Yep. So what we want to do is show people how in all the other hours of the day when they're not doing other political activism, they can actually still do something that has an impact on their future freedom. I mean, most of the mainstream systems, the banking system, the voting system, all that, they, they've been corrupted in one way or another that, so that they're, they're actually serving some other interest than freedom. So what we try to do is find the, the mechanisms or the actions or the systems that people can be involved in that help promote freedom in, in their commercial life, their education life, in all the other ways than just the uh, voting box. So what kind of things are you doing? Well, at the Pork Fest here, every year we set up a uh, tent. It's a, an educational kind of place where we invite people that are, are either the expert in their field. You know, we've brought people in from as far away as Canada to talk about a certain subject, or people that are you know, already in the Free State Project, uh, in the Free State Movement, who have a particular topic that we think everybody would be interested in, and we give each person an hour, and they can have an hour. We, we send out announcements. We use the Internet to promote it all. We print up a schedule. We have something going on every hour. It's all completely voluntary cooperation. We're trying to make it collaborative. Everybody can be involved. You know, like we could have a topic about how to start a, a local cable access thing. Oh, that's right. We already have one like that. <laughs> but you should be up there joining in on it. Uh, what happens is we want people to network and, and meet the other people because Porkfest is a huge networking thing. You finally meet the people maybe you've talked to on the internet. Yeah. And so the gun people are over there after their uh, official presentation and now they're outside of the tent and they're, they're continuing their meeting, you know. Awesome. Now, um, you were telling me earlier about some alternative currencies, um, something that you guys have been starting up as well as some roasting coffee and serving some coffee here. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you holding in your hand here? What is this? Okay. In my <laughs> hand, I'll show you. Here's, a, here's an e one Expo Hour certificate and a one-tenth Expo Hour. And what happens is there's there's all kinds of alternative monies and this one is it's kind of a copy of what they did in Ithaca, New York, the Ithaca Hour. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, you know, the way I look at it is if there was a crash of the of the Federal Reserve system or something and people couldn't do exchange anymore because their their money wasn't worth anything, you know, they're kind of stuck. What do they do? Well, Ithaca came up with the idea that everybody still has their labor, their time. And it says right on here, this uh, private trade certificate is worth approximately one hour of human labor. Then we've got the, the tenth of an hour of human labor. Uh, what we did was to try to jump start the uh, micro economy, was we started a, a coffee service over here. So we have American coffee, we have espresso, uh, we have souvenir mugs. So you can get your Alt Expo mug and uh, you can actually get the coffee, which by the way is roasted by a New Hampshire company. Uh, we call it Alt Java, and uh, this alternative to boring establishment cor corporate coffee was found by a roving band of free marketeers, roasted on June 10th, and smuggled into the pork fest. So. <laughs> nice. Well, um, I know that you've got to go around and round up some recruits for uh, some kind of a youth project you're going on that's going on in the next hour. Yeah, um, there's there's a lot of. Um, kids you know in the porcupine yep. uh, movement and uh, the teenagers a couple of them in particular they want to have their own alternative to boy scouts girl scouts and all that website all right thanks so much as always sure pleasure speaking with you Good to, hey, give me back my money. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way you can trade for some <laughs>while a lot of Port Fest has to do with reducing the size of government in one way or another, whether it be politics or civil disobedience or whatever people's strategy, there's also a lot that's going on that's vacation style and fun for the entire family. There's rock climbing, uh, fishing, hiking, bike riding, horseback riding, all sorts of stuff you can do, including this friendly dance competition that's going on behind me. Let's check it out.
we're putting on Porkfest this year. Yep. You're the director. Um, for the viewers, we've been showing them, you know, some of the things that are going on at Porkfest this year. Do you want to explain what the festival is and what its purpose is? Yeah, so Porkfest is organized by the Free State Project, which, as I hope some of your viewers know, it's an organization we're trying to recruit 20,000 pro-liberty activists to move to the state of New Hampshire. You know, once a year become active, make New Hampshire still the live free or die state, and make it even freer, make it better and part of the community. And so what Porkfest is about is kind of providing a summer gathering. And I like to say it's a showcase of New Hampshire and the Free State Project. Which means that, so during the weekdays, we go on bus tours around the state. We're going to businesses around the state. We're going on hikes around the state. And then on the weekend, we have uh, bands performing. We had uh, over 50 exhibitors this year, twice as many as last year. We have a festival food tent. And all through the week, we have camping in uh, Gunstock Campground. And that's a real opportunity for people you know, to sit by the fire, you know, have a few beers, cook a few burgers, and really just talk about what's it like in New Hampshire, some of their issues, you know, views about the world. And it's really where people connect and people really get sold. Because a lot of what the Free State Project community is over the internet. And so actually when people are talking, a lot of times they'll just go into their forum names. And, but once people come to New Hampshire, come to Porkfest and say, oh, this is for real. Like, New Hampshire really is an awesome state. The Free State Project community really is an awesome group of people. That really sells them. And so that, those are some of the aspects, those are some of the purposes about what Porkfest is about. And now, I, I mean, I know I, people have moved in years past because they've come to Porkfest and they didn't want to leave. So yeah. I know there are people who have, have stayed in New Hampshire because they liked it so much. They, yeah. they just couldn't I leave. mean, I like to say, though, one of the guys, my, one of my main uh, volunteers this year is a guy named Mark Warden. And he went on, he came to Porkfest 07, first time, went on the bus tours during the week, you know, was camping out. He moved by the end of the summer and he's in Manchester, started a Porcupine. Porcupine, uh, Porcupine Realtor, and you know he does real estate work and investment, and he's helping out with the festival. And he's just one of several people that I know of that, after coming to Porcupine Seven, they were here within a couple months, if not a year. Right now, um, this year, the, how's the attendance been? It's Pretty to good. Uh, we've definitely gotten more than last year, and a lot of that is due to the expansion of the festival. Is that we advertise a bit more to the New Hampshire community. And that goes back to a bit of the history of the festival, which was it used to be largely just Free State Project. And still the majority is that if you're interested in Free State Project, you come to Port Fest. But we really want Port Fest to be also a New Hampshire event. You know, people that, you know, just want to have a good time, come to Port Fest for the exhibitors, interesting exhibitors. So we have everything from solar, pa solar panel companies to cartoonists to pro-liberty organizations. And so because we, had, we got a lot of more New Hampshire natives coming to the festival this year, we have a lot of more interest in the Free State Project due to the Ron Paul campaign and a lot of other things that happened in the past year, growth of the Free State Project, the first 1,000 pledge. So a lot of factors have really made this the largest work for us yet. Yeah, I mean, I know Toby and I who did the show, we're New Hampshire natives, yeah. and a lot of them have showed up in years past, despite the fact it was really not advertised yeah. to the general public. You really kind of had to know of the Free State right. Project. Right, kind of an inside uh, thing. Right, and I know you've added more bands this year, as yeah. people can probably hear in the back. Yeah. Um, what else have you done new for this year? So what we did new is, we rather, in the past we used to just have a buffet dinner, right? So you had to pay you know, $20 a ticket per person, stand in line. And so to make it more of a festival-like atmosphere, we got a uh, food tent serving you know, festival foods, hot dogs, burgers, fried dough, drinks. We also have an open, we have a beer garden, you know, which people have been uh, having fun with. I know, it, it's gotten some positive reviews for people who've talked to. Yeah, and so we've added, uh, we've doubled the size of the exhibitors. We, and we moved the exhibitors outside under one large tent. And the synergy that gets along with seeing all these organizations getting to talk with each other and talking with the attendees has been exciting. We congregated the campsites this year. So in the past, people kind of just camped wherever they wanted to. But this year we said, okay, these sections of the campground are really for Port Fest attendees. And so we've had a lot more social tents, a lot more social gatherings. We've obviously added the bands. We increased our advertising. We lessened the number of speakers, but kept one work, so we still kept the Made the Move panel. And we're always looking to grow and add new things, so we give people a feedback sheet. 
we incorporate that feedback into the next year. So 09 will probably be even larger, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. As I told people during my keynote, uh, with my welcome speech, I said, there's no reason Porkfest shouldn't have 1,500 people next time. year. Yeah, it has been a good time. And, um, it, you know, this is the last day, the last full day of Porkfest. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it's been a lot of fun so far, and it looks like it will be for the rest of the night. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Cool. Yeah, let's do it. So we're wrapping up the weekend here at Porkfest 2008. Um, I know that I've had a great time, got to talk to a lot of different Liberty activists, people who are either already in New Hampshire or are moving to New Hampshire to fight for more freedom and less government. Right, and you know, this goes on every summer. So for people who didn't have a chance to make it out this year, there's gonna be a Porkfest in 2009 too. And it's a really great opportunity if you're a New Hampshire native to meet some people who are looking at moving to New Hampshire and making it their home too. Um, they already clearly like a lot of things about the state, but maybe there's some things they want to change and maybe they're some of the same things you, you'd like to see change. So it's a really great opportunity just to, to meet a whole bunch of diverse people with, you know, very interesting people here. Absolutely. And I know that some people sometimes, they don't understand what free staters are, but I mean, we're both natives here. Um, but I, I know that I get along with everybody I've seen here because they're not here to take over New Hampshire. They're here to fight for more freedom, more rights for all of us and get the government a little less out of our lives. So if you like that, hey, maybe check them out a little bit more and um, get involved yourself. I know we talk to all sorts of different people who are doing all sorts of different things to fight for liberty. Um, so there's all different things that you can hook up, whether you're in the state, out of the state, want to move here, already living here, already organizations that you can simply just plug into and get involved. Right, and you know, it's not just political organizations either. A lot of people think it's all political activism focused on the legislature and the courts, but it's really not. There are a lot of people who focus on civil disobedience and they want to work outside the system and simply challenge laws that they feel need to be challenged, that are bad laws. Um, there are people doing creative endeavors like TV shows, radio shows. Um, we even showed you someone who's doing a comic strip as part of their activism. So there's a lot of different ways you can approach it and there's really something for people of all different interest types. You don't just have to want to put on a suit and go lobby right. for repeal of certain legislation or for new legislation that grants them new freedom. There's all kinds of options open to you. So really whatever your interest area is, we have it here. Yeah, whatever your forte is, there's always a place to get involved. Well, it, as the lights are getting dim, it's time to, to wrap this up and go on to the next part of Porkfest because it's not all about the political stuff or the civil disobedience or the speeches, but it's also about just simply camping and having a great time. I know we checked out the fun tent earlier, so probably going to be some people socializing down there, maybe having a couple adult beverages um, and doing all sorts of different things, um, having a good time camping. So I think it's time to say goodbye to the viewers and go get involved with that. If you didn't get a chance to come to Porkfest this year, possibly check out next year because it's a great time whether you want to get involved or you just want to come out and camp and get social with people who actually care about freedom and liberty. It's, it's a great time. Well, it has been Toby here with you. And Nick. Check us out at freemindstv.com and we will be coming back with an all-new TV show next week. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. When I look around the country, baby, things ain't looking very good. When I look around the country, baby, things ain't looking very good. I see the president and Congress, they ain't acting like they should. I went looking to the judges, baby. But my hopes are way too high I went looking to the judges, baby But my hopes are way too high They're stealing power from the juries Don't it make you wonder why? What are we gonna do, babe? That's what you keep on asking me What are we gonna do, babe? That's what you keep on asking me. I know you never wanted much, babe. You just wanted to be free. Have you heard of 
about the Free State Project That's what some folks are gonna do Have you heard about the Free State Project That's what some folks are gonna do They're recruiting 20,000 And they want folks like me and you Yeah, let's stop packing, baby we wanted this for way too long Yeah, let's stop packing, baby We wanted this for way too long Let's move up to New Hampshire And let's go build our happy home Am I on? Am I on? Uh, uh, do I talk now? Talk do I talk now? <laughs> I'm Gardner Goldsmith she's here. And I think she's up by where they're doing the show You're watching Free Minds TV. Open your mind, baby. Tell others to do the same. <laughs> Log on to FreeMindsTV.com for archives of the show, the Free Minds Radio podcasts, show content and the forum, ways to donate, the member section, contact info, and a whole lot more, all at freemindstv.com.